Hi, I'm Todd Rhodes along with Matt Steen, and thank you for joining us uh, for Ministry Briefing today. Today we've got a couple of uh, really interesting guests. I'm looking forward to this conversation. We have Christopher Silver and Thomas Coleman, and they are research, researchers at the University of Tennessee uh, Chattanooga. Just came out with a brand new study uh, on, uh, found it actually over at the CNN Belief blog on some research they did about the six different types of atheists uh, that they were able um, to uh, decipher from their studies. And guys, thanks for joining us today. I, I just want to start off by asking you, so why, why, what caused you to start this study? What, uh, what really intrigued you, made you start asking these questions? Well, this is uh, Chris Silver. I um, originally had designed this study because I've been doing research on religion now for over 10 years, um, working with a, a, a well-known psychologist of religion, Dr. Ralph W. Hood Jr., who is prolific in this field. Um, and one of the things I was sort of concerned about is, is that when we would do these large survey studies, many times atheists and agnostics or, or the religious nuns, N-O-N-E-S, would get lumped into a single category and um, from what I knew about the non-belief community, it was obviously a very diverse group of people. So, um, so it sort of set me out to want to study and see, okay, we'll see how diverse this community is. And so based on a series of interviews and then confirmed by a set of surveys, we were able to detect and report and empirically test these different types of, of, um, of non-belief is what we call it. Yeah. Well, well, um, most of us in the evangelical community, pastors and church leaders, have read a lot of these studies, right? And and, and every, as you say, everybody is really kind of truly lumped into this, what we call this growing segment of society called the religious nuns. So what you're saying is really not everybody's all lumped together. You're finding a lot of different kinds of, of well, religious nuns. And also, actually, some of these studies do allow for people to identify is an atheist or an agnostic, but yes. we also know that not a lot of people are comfortable with identifying as such, and there is, there is a, a pretty good speculation that a large percentage of the nuns are actually some type or form of non-belief, some variant, I guess, if you, they, don't, they don't believe in a god or gods. So we recognize that the nun category doesn't explain enough and maybe the atheism or agnosticism category explains too little. Well, maybe, fellas, for the sake of our conversation, would you just mind running through the six types that you guys found? Um, initially, I'll be <laughs> pull out my little cheat sheet here. Uh, <laughs> our, the largest category we found was the intellectual, atheist, agnostic. And uh, this type, if you will, primarily – you know, aside from not believing in a God or God, is, is concerned with educating themselves, uh, science, philosophy, discussing with their friends. And they also enjoy uh, discussing with other equally educated and, and respectful believers uh, of different religions. So they're not just looking to uh, bash religion. They're looking to understand the world around them in the same way as others are. We have the activists, atheist agnostic. These people are very uh, socially engaged, and they don't limit themselves just to activism that might benefit the non-belief or atheist community. Some of these people primarily are in animal shelters helping mm -hmm. or uh, any, anything, ecological movements. We have the seeker agnostic. Uh, these people, they're not exactly comfortable with, with making a stance on either believing or, or not believing yet. They're open to metaphysical possibilities, if you will. They're, they're not ready to, you know, lie stake in this claim of belief or unbelief. Uh, the anti-theists, these are the ones that primarily you're going to read about in the news. Uh, you know, you might see them with a scarlet letter A uh, button on, and they're not going to hesitate to let you know that they're an atheist. And uh, they're the ones that draw a lot of the attention uh, in the non-belief community, just like uh, in the belief community, you might have the Westboro Baptist Church, who is always making headlines. Sure. Everybody has a crazy uncle, right? Certainly. Uh, medieval. And perhaps on the other side of the spectrum, we have what uh, what we call the non-theist. 
And uh, a good description of this type, if you will, is the person, he who cares the less wins. So, uh, you know, th this particular group isn't concerned with athe atheism, non-belief, and they're not concerned with religion either. For they, them... They just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they care just enough to fill out a survey, and that's about it. Uh, finally, something that was uh, very interesting that some of the articles have talked about is the ritual atheist agnostic. And uh, this is a group that finds some utility in uh, religious rituals, uh, ceremonies, uh, they may even be sitting next to you in church. Uh, so essentially, you know, although they don't believe, they're not afraid to participate, enjoy, or partake in some religious rituals. And, and to note that the uh, ritual atheist agnostic, many of these folks consider themselves what they call cultural Christians or cultural Jews, uh, cultural Catholics. And so, um, for for your you know for your particular listeners. The chan th this group was actually de a decent sized group, meaning that there's a lot of folks that are out there going to church every Sunday who people probably don't even know that they're atheist or agnostic, but they appreciate the community, they appreciate the symbolism of the ritual. Um, so certainly there are those types out there. Now, you know, it'd be interesting to see if we have a couple of sermons this coming Sunday related to this. But, <laughs> but anyways, it's, but it is, it's certainly interesting. Um, that this group emerged with. Tommy and I both were surprised. We didn't expect this group to come out, and it just, boom, there it was. So. Yeah. We had people. No, we had, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We no, had people me. I interviewed who, uh, who talked about enjoying going to church and singing yeah. in the choir. Uh, that was something that, that stood out. Maybe, maybe you guys could help us um, and help our listeners kind of understand what, um, how you identify a ritual atheist from someone who would be considered, you know, a, a Christian or not a... Well, help, help, us, help us understand how you define that. The study had two parts. One is the first part was about we, we conducted roughly 60 interviews with people from around the United States. And what we discovered was, was that when we asked, we, we, we tried to avoid the use of the atheist agnostic, although it did come up eventually. But what we tried to say was, you know, people who didn't believe in God or, you know, essentially didn't believe in, you know, the transcendent reality necessarily, that they were interested specifically, um, you know, in some form of non-belief. So basically interviewed people and asked them, you know, if they, if they didn't believe in God and, you know, didn't believe in some of that to contact us to participate in the study. And we tried to avoid that term atheist agnostic. And that's, essentially how this group emerged. And then even then when we had the qualitative data uh, for study one, which brought this group out, Tommy and I both were like, there's no way. So when we went into study two, this was what was all, you know, we, we really seriously expected that we really had only detected five groups and somehow the six had just popped up somehow. And sure enough, no, we had people who identified as this in the quantitative data. And there were particular psychological markers de um, detected by the surveys that we use and the instrumentation that we use that showed that this is, in fact, a distinct group. So they do exist, meaning that there is the, there is the reality of the sort of ritual atheist agnostic that, that is there. Important to recognize for the viewers as well is that Dr. Silver and myself did not label anyone. We allowed the participants yes. to identify. We provided descriptions that were based off of the interviews, and they said, Hey, you know what? This ritual, uh, you know, the name wasn't there, but they said, well, type one, you know what? That, that's how I identify it. This description really fits me. So our participants chose what group they were right, in. Right, right. Would, would you guys consider that to be, you know, the pop, the trendy label seems to be spiritual but not religious? Is that kind? Is there a difference between? That title and the ritual atheist, or well, certainly, certainly there were um, there were sort of the atheist agnostics that identified as spiritual, not religious. I guess the point that's interesting um, for your listeners is is that spiritual, not religious, appears to be a much wider um, sort of ontological position. And when I use the term ontology here, I'm talking in terms of truth, meaning that um, they may not believe in God, but maybe they believe in some other. Um, some other sense of awe or some other transcendent experience that isn't 
interpreted through the theological bounds, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And we, had, we did have people identify as spiritual um, in terms of yeah. the literature and studies. Essentially, in today's world, everyone identifies as spiritual from all walks of belief or non-belief. So there's, there's two ways of interpreting that. I'm making fast because I know we're living on time. But one option is you could, you could essentially say that spiritual is um, – it, 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 it talks about some other experience that, um, while it may not be tied to a belief in God, still means there's some kind of sense of awe or whatever. Option two is, is that they could – they may call themselves spiritual – as sort of a, a protective mechanism on their identity, meaning they don't believe in anything, but they also understand there's a stigma around the term atheist agnostic. So they use the term spiritual to sort of protect themselves from any kind of outside or exterior judgment. And, and, and nowhere else would something like that be true that here we're in the Southeast United States. And so, you know, um, you know, religion's a part of the culture here. And so that may in fact, you know, be a, a defensive mechanism. So, so, again, not sure. There's no data to support either. Further research obviously needs to be done, but, but certainly certainly seems to indicate that there's something there. So. Well, that's fascinating. I, mean, this, I, I have a feeling this is one of those conversations that could go on for about three yeah. hours. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do want to ask you guys one thing because we, we do try to keep these short because nobody likes to listen to Todd and I for all that long. You guys, yes, but us, no. Um, <laughs> If, if, if there's if there's one thing you could communicate to our audience, you know, which which are typically evangelical Christian pastors, what what would that one thing be? Uh, certainly, that is every bit diverse as you see yourself to be as an individual, as unique as as you see yourself as the other person, uh, the non-believer, the atheist, however they want to identify, is is probably every bit as unique, every bit as diverse. Um, as you see yourself. So just as, you know, your congregation has people of all shapes, sizes, colors, backgrounds, dialects, um, people who identify as not believing in God have the same thing. Some of them are in your face. Um, other, than, uh, other, other people are sitting next to you in church and you don't even know it. So, uh, you know, non-belief and religion is truly a diverse label and should be understand uh, not necessarily is a is a very broad identity if it's going to be it, it doesn't mean that much to say you're an atheist you're going to have to have a conversation with this person if you want to know what they're about yeah. one, one other quick point i would make to compliment uh, uh mr Coleman's is that um one thing the ministers could look at is is that if you look at sort of this non-belief aspect meaning you know being you know nuns or or Atheism, agnosticism, however you want to call it, both the two, two and the two most prevalent sort of sociological theories of religion, both the Stark and Fink model, which talks about market religion, meaning that everyone's out for spiritual market share and all churches are competing for souls, and at the same time, there's also the the Steve Bruce theory that you know we're headed towards secularization. Atheism actually fits in both of these, um, in that um, for religious leaders, in some ways. We've got to look at how we brand the tradition, and, and it's interesting to look at the, in, in many of the church phenomena. Many of these organizations are now rebranding their churches, so no longer are you First Baptist or Second Baptist. Now you're Crossway or or the Light or those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So maybe the thing to consider is, is as part of this whole rebranding movement in Christianity, is to consider having open community dialogue, where bring people in and let them define themselves and explain themselves to to the congregation of the group and get to know these individuals so that, um, you know, there can be, there, it can benefit the congregation to better understand how to connect with, with others in the community who maybe don't share the same view as the church. And so um, I really think that, um, and, and keep in mind, gentlemen, I come from a very strong faith background in Christianity myself. My parents are very religious. Um, I come from a small town in the South, you know, where religion is everything. So, I certainly, I certainly understand um, the mentality in the back of many Christians' minds about what's at stake if we don't save America. I get that. And so to me, I think that the way you save America is rather than being sort of, sort of from a, a, a conflict perspective, take it from a productive dialogue perspective. And I think it'll benefit everybody. I think if you, you, know, if you become the model in your community, how can people not want to be a part of your church? And so that's, you know, to me, that's, that's where 
I see this being beneficial to pastors. And yeah. if your listeners are interest, interested, I also know of a program called uh, Send an Atheist to Church, which will actually <laughs> pair up a church who's interested in having uh, someone non-hostile, a friendly, friendly atheist come and, and be interviewed and discuss with their congregation anything. So. Oh, cool. Very good. Very good. That's interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll get a link uh, from you on that and put it in our, in our show notes here. But, guys, I, I just want to thank you so much. Uh, for taking the time, both uh, Christopher and Thomas, taking the time uh, to uh, sit down and chat with us today. I think this is going to be immensely, Matt, uh, beneficial to our audience and pastors. You know, the one thing that I got out of it that I've, that I've just not really thought about is uh, I think so many oftentimes that we just lump everybody that's not like us into one huge giant category. And it just makes sense. As many different types of Christians as there are, so are there uh, in atheists and agnostics as well. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, hey, we'll keep in touch uh, when you get some more research in. Let's let's do this again. It was great.